how to change a motor on your Dyson DC41, DC41 Mark II, DC55, which is basically this one here. Um, ball multi-floor, animal to whatever it is. If it looks like this, basically. Remove this red clip, and then the head just comes off. Remove the filter side of the ball shell, that comes off. Remove your filter, and then undo all six of these screws. Now you can remove this, and also remove this screw here for the internal hose. On the other side of the ball, get a thin screwdriver, poke it into the hole that you can see. Then you give a turn of the um, ball shell clockwise while holding this firmly. And basically that should happen. And then what you do is you turn this black piece anti-clockwise and then it unscrews. Oh, there we go. So now that can come off like that. Remove these two screws, that comes off. Remove these two side screws. Remove these two screws and also the one right over here. Right there. Make sure the vacuum's reclined. You can now split the yoke assembly like that. But what you do is you lift out on this side and then just pull it out like so. Make sure that this part, which is the wiring loom and holder, isn't trapped. So just lift it out like that, and there you go. Make sure that the hose is disconnected as well, from the actual ball. So that's the yoke assembly removed. Remove the upper yoke cover by sliding it down, and it just pulls off. Literally just pulls off. Just, there we go, it just pops off like that. Remove this screw, that one over there, to that little black one. That one, this one, and also that one. You can unclip from here on this side, okay? So it pops open on one side, and then what you do is you lift up on this cover, and it just pops off like that, revealing the motor inlet and the PCB. At this stage, take a picture of your wiring so you know where the coloured wires go. And then you remove the screw here and the screw there, and the entire PCB just comes off. Right, so with the wires removed, disconnected even, and the screws removed, the PCB now lifts up like so. There we go. Now you can lift up on this side for the entire bottom part of the uh, unit to come off. Okay, so what you have is this. At this stage, you can literally pull the wires out but they're held in by these rubber grommets, so if you push them out their holes, the wire should just feed out the holes. Also take note of the micro switch, so the wires go behind this black little clip over here, and that's the layout of the micro switch, so basically, right? Uh, yeah. When the machine's upright, the switch closes, and when the, you know, the, uh, the wheels go up, that's when the vacuum's recline, and that's when the switch comes on for the brush bar. Like that. Now you remove all the screws here, apart from this one. Leave that alone. Now what you can do with those screws removed, you can remove the stabiliser, or the legs, or the pedals, whatever you want to call it. So you lift out on this side, making sure that it comes out on the other side as well. And there we go. So there it is, and if you find it a bit difficult, it's because, maybe it's because, see this metal part here? It corresponds with the uh, locking mechanism, and that's what makes it stand upright, right over there. And finally, we can unclip the motor lid. So the clip here, and also there's another one somewhere at the top. But basically, once you do that, the uh, clips should free this black cover. And there you go, the motor is exposed like that. Lift up the motor. And boom, Dyson motor. Oh, Panasonic motor or YDK motor, whatever it is you got, yeah, you reach your motor destination. Okay, since I'm going to be modifying my Dyson to have a more powerful motor, uh, what you do is basically disconnect the two wires on your motor, and then disconnect, no, you reconnect them, put it back in the way it was, and then just put the cover on, making sure that this seal is intact. Okay, so make sure that your micro switch is in place correctly, and it works just like that. Put on your legs like this. Okay, you stretch this out like that slightly, and then you put on the stabilizers or legs or whatever you want to call them. 
Yeah. So they go into their places like that. So it's pretty self explanatory, but yeah, it's literally like that. Okay? And then once you do that, make sure you put this screw in first. Along with the motor unit screws. Just making sure the wires are nicely tucked in OCD ways like that. Now we put on this first ducting slash PCB housing. Yeah, so you put this bleeder valve right in its location, right? First. And then you make sure that that screw hole lines up. Along with that going there and these fitting into their screw holes. So yeah, that's all done nicely now. And make sure that the wires are in place. I've done this prior to filming this because obviously I wanted to make sure that it was done right because I wanted to see if my modification worked. And luckily it has. So you just wire up the PCB, two screws in and then the cover goes on. Nearly done now, we just need to put on this upper motor cover. So you slide it in. Basically, see these um, grooves, yeah? That groove over there lines up with right underneath there on both sides. And this part just clicks in. There you go. Now, this is the part that a lot of people struggle with, yeah? But this cog here, yeah? You need to loosen it, so... Just a few turns with a screwdriver to loosen it, yeah? And then what you do is... You can then put it on. Because what you're trying to aim for is... This first tooth over here... Mates up with... The first hole in there on the far left. So let me just show you this better right over there the first one so that's what you're trying to aim for yeah so what you do is you stretch this out again like that making sure these three holes so these three holes here may top with these holes as well for the screws and also one more thing you got to multitask with basically is um, make sure this goes in there and it slots in perfectly. It's like so. Yeah, like that basically. It's trying to aim for. So, watch this. Let me just set my camera properly. Yeah, and so you put this in first, which is the power supply for the cleaner head or brush bar, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, uh, this is perfectly. There we go. Now you stretch this out. <clears throat> And keep going, keep going, don't be scared of it breaking, it's a very, very robust and durable vacuum cleaner, but you smack it into place on this side first, yeah, so, and it just magically works, I don't know how it does, yeah, but it magically fits in, this can come out of place, yeah, but you gotta put it back in again, there we go, and look, that is beautifully done, no gaps, that, that's, oh, nice, very nice done perfectly properly and well you got to screw it up first so screw there screw there that little tiny one over there don't forget this little bracket as well which goes right over here and it's held on by two screws yeah and if uh, how does it go on like this it does it does there we go yeah so two screws there tighten that cog screw and then uh there's two screws over there make sure you don't break your holes holder because basically what it is right the stabilizer can snap off this thin plastic piece so make sure you push that in and screw it in where it belongs so with all the screws done now make sure that your mechanism works properly so there should be a bit of play like that yeah when it's upright make sure that the stabilizer or kickstand actually works and that it locks back upright again and the changeover valve works as well. Exactly like that. Bang on. Exactly like that, okay? So once that's done, and you've successfully done it, what you do then is you put on your um, HEPA filter plate and screw it up with six screws. 
So that side of the bowl is all done. Put your filter back in. Make sure that you've washed your filter and it's thoroughly dry, bone dry even, before you put it back. And now you can fit your ball shell. And as for the other side, let me just quickly do this here. You know this takes ages, right? But anyways, once this part's done, and you do the clicks like that, the other side, there should be some washers there, so put them back. The latest ones don't have washers for some reason. But anyways, what you do is you put this back on, turn it clockwise. So let me just quickly do that. Yeah. I'm hoping my modification pimped out Dyson works really, really well. Because I like pimping out vacuums, you see, making them work better than they're supposed to be. <clears throat> or better than they are, even. But, yeah, anyways. Uh, now that's tight, you put on the cover. So you slot it in. Fit in your narrow screwdriver. Uh, I need a narrow one. Where's another one? Oh, there it is. Yeah, so. Hold it in. You basically, oh, this is being a pain. You turn that little thing clockwise and it locks into place. You fit your cleaner head by making sure that the connectors for the power socket mates up with the prongs on here. Clip it into place. And there you go. You successfully, hopefully successfully, managed to change the motor on a Dyson ball upright vacuum.